In the previous segment, I introduced the notion of a dynamical landscape and developed the notions of eigenvectors and eigenvalues to describe the shape of that landscape, at least locally. I wanted to reiterate the major point that I made at the end of the previous segment. In a nonlinear system, the dynamical landscape may not have those nice bowl and saddle shapes that can be approximated nicely with that linear mathematics. Rather, they're much more complex. Linearized analysis works well in small patches of landscapes like this. If you try to pretend this whole landscape is a nice hemispherical bowl, you won't get the right answer. That's one of the major meta-messages of this course. If the problem is nonlinear, you need to use nonlinear mathematics to handle it. Otherwise, what you're doing is what's called the lamppost problem, looking for your keys only where the light shines. The light here is the linear mathematics, and it works fine on linear problems. That's the ground around the lamppost. But if your problem is nonlinear, out there in the dark, the linear mathematics won't work. So if we look at the pendulum near the inverted point, for instance, that's a point in the dynamical landscape with one positive eigenvalue and one negative eigenvalue. The eigenvectors look like this, and the landscape is a saddle point. That's true at theta equals pi. It's also true at theta equals negative pi, but remember that at the origin, where theta equals omega equals zero, that's an elliptic fixed point. That looks like a bowl. If we zoomed in on this fixed point and thought about dropping a ball a little way out on the unstable eigenvector, that's the little red dot there, and then we watched its path, we'd see something interesting happen. That path would actually curve around and eventually connect over to the fixed point at minus pi, like that. That means that the linear mathematics is only right locally, right near the place where we did the calculation, inside that gray circle. If the system is nonlinear, linearized approximations are only good in small regions. Remember the lamppost? Now let's see what happens if we drop a ball a little way out the unstable eigenvector above and to the right of the fixed point at minus pi. I hope you can see that little green dot there. If we watch its path, we'll see that connect around to the fixed point at pi. These two structures, by the way, are called heteroclinic orbits when those manifolds connect to different fixed points. And they're called homoclinic orbits when one fixed point's stable eigenvector connects back to its own unstable direction, like this. Now the paths that I just drew aren't real trajectories. If you think about it for a minute, you'll realize that the notion of a trajectory going through a saddle point, like the one at theta equals pi in the pendulum, doesn't make sense. That trajectory would have to stop at that point. Remember, that point is at theta equals pi and omega equals zero, zero velocity. So it would have to stop at that point and then start again. That's not physical. These curves that I've drawn on this plot, joining the unstable points at theta equals pi and negative pi, are more like features of the landscape, the ridges and the valley bottoms. This metaphor isn't perfect, but it'll do for this course. Their formal names are the stable and unstable manifolds of a fixed point. The formal definition looks like this. These manifolds are surfaces in the state space, loosely speaking, that are like nonlinear generalizations of eigenvectors in the sense that they are invariant manifolds. A state that starts on one of these manifolds stays on it, just like an eigenvector. They start out tangent to the eigenvectors, but then they curve around, as dictated by the dynamical landscape. Here we've got two fixed points, x1 star and x2 star, and I've drawn in the stable and unstable manifolds in blue. And here are the eigenvectors at x1 star, shown in red. The red curves are locally tangent to the blue curves. If stable and unstable manifolds are nonlinear analogs to eigenvectors, what about the eigenvalues? It turns out that growth along the stable and unstable manifolds is also exponential in the limit of long time, and the exponent has a huge role in defining and diagnosing chaos. It's called the Lyapunov exponent, or more properly if you speak Russian, Lyapunov, and we will come back to it several times. The stable and unstable manifolds play a number of roles, both in the mathematics and in the applications of that mathematics to real-world problems. You can use them to find boundaries of basins of attraction. This structure lets you filter out noise and control chaotic systems. This overall structure lets you prove formally that a system is chaotic. 
Indeed, the bends and folds of the stable and unstable manifolds are the source of sensitive dependence on initial conditions and the source of the structure of a chaotic attractor. So they're going to come back. By the way, that thought experiment that we did earlier in this segment, dropping a ball a little way out the eigenvector and watching where it goes, is actually the algorithm for finding the stable and unstable manifolds. Spoiler alert, you need to run time backwards to find the stable ones.